Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is on a topic that I've been thinking about quite a bit lately. The topic in question is shark conservation. More specifically, what you, the audience, can do and look into in order to contribute to helping sharks. While there is no single elevator pitch answer to this very complex topic, I believe this video can get you started in the right direction. So let's not waste any time and dive right in. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's talk about shark conservation, a path forward. So, before we begin, let me set the groundwork for this video with the proper context. 1. Despite what you might hear, this topic is very complex. The theme I want you to keep in mind as we go through this video is the same I always say when talking about science. Both science and shark conservation are at their best when they are specific and accurate. Two, set your expectations accordingly. Or in other words, understand that saving sharks or any animal that's on the endangered list is not something that will happen overnight. This is a process that will take multiple generations of patience, consistency, and attention to detail. This will work very much like evolution. Change over an extended period of time through fraction size changes. There's no way around it. Now that we've established that, if you truly want to start taking steps towards saving sharks, the first thing you're going to do is pick up a copy of Dr. David Schiffman's book, Why Sharks Matter. You can either get the physical book or listen to it on Audible. I personally got both. Give this book a thorough read. Don't speed through it. Truly digest what the good doctor is saying as he lays out the reality of the state of sharks and past mistakes others have made in shark conservation. I cannot overstate how vital it is that you get this book so that you understand what you're walking into. Our buddy Shark Bites is even in the book. Go ask him. In order for us to start making progress on shark conservation, we first have to look at how it's done. The idea at its core is to ensure the survival of shark species, especially the ones with big impacts on their respective ecosystems. A part of my intro at the beginning of my videos is have a seat at the table. Let's take this table and label it the shark conservation table. I know, original. At this table, in order for us to be successful, three groups must be guaranteed a seat. The first group is obvious, the scientists. The individuals with the hard data and the subject matter experts on sharks. I imagine no one in my audience will argue at this point. The second group is the policymakers and politicians. I know, yuck, politicians. They're slimy, corrupt, and they smell. But here's the reality of the situation. They're the ones who make the policies that protect sharks. If we want to protect sharks, we need their help and approval. And we can't get their approval if they don't think it's worth their time. Shark toes, why would they not think it's worth their time? And who's the third group? Before I introduce the third group, let me point out something highlighted in Dr. Schiffman's book. In the past, conservationists have gotten policies and laws in place to protect certain areas. Why? Because conservationists saw a shark species in that location at one point during the year. Sounds good so far, right? Wrong. 
Why? Because those conservationists didn't go to the scientists. If they did, those scientists would have told them that the shark species they were trying to protect only passes through the protected area for a short time in the year. So yes, they got a law passed, but it didn't move the needle on the shark species numbers. That is a lot of time and effort those conservationists just wasted for that politician. That's one more politician that doesn't take our arguments serious anymore. And look, I distrust politicians as much as the next guy, but as someone who values his time, if I was in their shoes, I'd be pissed off too. This goes back to the theme I highlighted earlier. Why? It is vital that when we have a seat at the table with the scientists and the politicians, we must be specific and accurate so we don't waste their time and ours. Now, the third group that must have a seat at the table, and some of you aren't going to like this, but it's the fishermen. Here's the thing. Whether we like it or not, Fishermen are a part of the equation for saving sharks. If they're a part of the equation, we must work with them. Now, are all fishermen going to work with us? Of course not. But the ones that are will be far more willing to hear what we and the scientists have to say if we give them a seat. From a human standpoint, that's all most people want. A seat at the table when important decisions are being made that might affect them. Want to know why those conservationists got in so much hot water when the laws they passed didn't bear any fruit? Because the fishermen made a stink about it to the politician. For a lot of fishermen who are really good at what they do, fishing is all they do and all they know. It's how they make a living and feed themselves and their families. Very rarely do they catch sharks out of malice or because they think they're monsters. But they do catch them, because like you and me, they gotta eat and pay bills. If you're in a town where there's a lot of fishing or there's an area you want to take steps towards protecting for sharks and other animals, try to have a conversation with some of the local fishermen. No cameras or notepads, not for a viral moment or video. Just one person talking to another. Maybe join them for a beer, ask them about their family, or how long they've been fishing. If you're not careful, you might find out that they're just people like the rest of us. These three groups are the pieces we need at the table before we can truly start to make any real, lasting progress in shark conservation. Shark toes, where do the conservationists fit in this picture? I'm glad you asked, young grasshopper. You go to the front of the class. Our job as conservationists, YouTubers, and shark enthusiasts is to bring these three groups together. Set the table for them. Ask what kind of appetizers and drinks they want, if you will. On a serious note, the best thing we can honestly do is get to know the people from all three of these different groups. This can give you insights to certain things and can make it easier for you to facilitate a meeting with all of them. Now again, as stated earlier, set your expectations accordingly. Sometimes only two of the three groups will want to work together. Sometimes none of them will. Sometimes you might mess up. That is okay. This is going to be a very long process. Take whatever mistakes you make and learn from them. This is marathon chess, not sprint checkers. So there you have it. This is something you watching this video can do. All I ask is that you take the time to do the proper research, 
read Dr. Dave McShipman's book and have a plan. And be ready for that plan to change. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time. Remember to drink plenty of Celsius. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.